All right, so the Baki versus Kenyan movie. Why did it massively exceed my expectations? Yo! By like an insane margin, like a loss for words, honestly. So in this video, we're going to be reviewing different parts of the movie, getting my opinion, and you can also talk about your opinion in the comments below, and I will be sure to respond to you. Now, for my viewers that are big fans of movies in general, you and I know the most important part of a movie or one of the most important parts of a movie, which is the introduction. And now this introduction to this movie, Baki vs. Kengen, it's, it's so incredible. It's so incredible. Both Baki and Oma are running across a bridge. I don't know why they're running, really, but they cross paths. And then they get this massive feat of an earthquake type feat of them shaking the bridge just with their aura alone. That is, it's like, that type of thing is unprecedented in Kengen. But like in Baki, something similar would be like Yujiro shaking the skyscraper with his aura alone just because he's angry. So starting, starting the movie off with a feel like this to make things already like, to build things up and make things crazy, to let you know things are about to get very, very intense. Oh, stellar. Stellar. As far as the opening and the song, peak. Absolutely peak. I literally couldn't stay on my chair. I was literally dancing the whole way through. The song, the song fits so well. Atarashi Gako, the musicians, the girl band, thank you. Thank you so much. I love you girls so much. Yeah, the opening was kind of simplistic, but it, it was great. Still, it was very, very great. And the music added to that. Now for the prelude, in actuality, it's just a like a slow part of the movie to build up to the main points. But it still has some very interesting stuff inside it. I can assure you that. And it just contains some exposition for the underground arena and for Karahara and Tokugawa's relationship, as well as them referring to the Kengen and Baki crossover manga that they did a while ago where we had Young Dopo fighting in a Kengen match and he was fighting Saw Pang's dad, Pa Pang. But we'll get into that later because I really like like what this does for this movie. Subsequently, Gaia and Muteba meet up and they have a little nice interaction. Ultimately, they are just there for guard duty in case somebody breaks in, but hmm, maybe or not somebody would break in or people will just have to see. There is like so much more interactions I could talk about that have happened in this movie that are absolutely golden. I just love seeing two characters from different verses getting a hypothetical conversation. Like Dopo's connection with Saw Pang in this scene it fits so well just because they're both connected to Pa Pang. Saw Pang's father and Dopo's opponent back in the day. And Dopo and Hunt and uh, Saw Pang bond really well. Love to see it kind of like a proud uncle, as well as Julius and Oliva literally being the definition of gym bros, complimenting each other's physiques and trading their training regimens with each other. It's so, it's so entertaining to see because that's how it would go in real life if they were actually interacting. Additionally, with the Aiki masters of each universe, also conversating somewhat, but Goki seems a bit dismissive of Hatsumi, but that will soon change later on, you'll see. Like, there's plenty more interactions, plenty more, like, meetups of different similarly connected characters of each universe, and I relished in seeing how they actually went. But I wonder, viewer, which one is your favorite? Comment that down below. For the first main fight, Hanayama vs. Saw Pang, like, it really blew me out of the water. But like, at some parts, when I actually think the fight's over, it's not over, because both of these guys don't want to lose. I kind of underestimated how far they would go. If I'm being frank, I thought that Saw Pang would be the victor in this fight, just because of how like motivated he was to win and Hanayama just saw this as like a regular fight for him. You know, just based on how he is as a character. Power scaling wise, 
Hanayama would win against Sao Pang, but I'll make another video in the future detailing about that. Still a terrific fight nonetheless. If you want to get hyped, this fight is definitely for you. This really is a near perfect first match to get viewers and spectators really really excited for the upcoming matches later on. A very funny little segment of Julius and Oliva getting displeased with one another, arguing over muscles and then settling it with an arm wrestling match. And then Goki Shibukawa and Hatsune appear to stop it. And that's where the two Aiki masters bond. Really funny, it's just like a really funny moment. Like it's really good to add some lightheartedness in the middle of an intense match. Prepping us up for the next one. Jack versus Ryan. Ooh. Um. Both characters got their disrespect in. Fighting like crazy people through and through. Questionably, Jack entered like his skinny form that he did in the Maximum when he faced Baki for this fight in the movie. I understand why they added that to give Jack some sort of like power up to verse like Ryan's removal. But really, it doesn't make sense that he has that form in this movie because it's not established that he was taking too much drugs beforehand. But an intense fight nonetheless. I personally did not like it more than Hanayama vs Saopang, but it was still pretty good, I guess. I forgot to mention uh, something before Saopang and Hanayama's fight. Kano Agito has like the forehead scar that he got after the Kangen tournament, so this potentially could be Kangen characters early Omega or right after the uh, tournament, the Kangen Annihilation tournament. It's just by the way, my angel pickle, he's entered the fray, got past security and he wants to like fight Ryan because Ryan is like taking his food, which is like Jack is the food, but it swiftly gets taken care of by Oma and Baki. And I have to say, I really enjoy like, Oma calming pickle down, talking to him. That, that scene is so wholesome. I replayed that like multiple times i love it again some lightheartedness comedy with like chiharu and adam dudley this time they're having like this like endurance competition for who can hold in their urge to go to the bathroom because they both wanted to go at the same time so they just stand there waiting for the other to go before them how manly of them oh my as soon as I saw like Baki training like in his waiting room, of course, Oma's also training in his waiting room, like prepping himself to fight Baki. But Baki is using imagination training and imagining Oma just like he does for his other opponents. And I was thinking, oh, it's so over for Oma. It's so over. Oh no, Oma. I was thinking he's bound to lose at this point because Baki just has him red before the fight even happens. Okay, so to chalk up the Baki vs. Oma fight, the biggest fight of this movie, literally the selling point of this movie, it was astonishing. It was astonishing, man. Just seeing Baki just throw out all the techniques he knows and Oma like somewhat adapting to each one best way he can. Oh, it was miraculous. It was so miraculous. And the animation was so good a lot of the times. The Nico style versus the obscure techniques of the Baki franchise. An absolute thrill to watch. And the ending to this fight was like beautiful. It was beautiful. They ended it off like how Baki and Yujiro fought in the Father Son fight. The poses are even like pay homage to that fight. It's they're literally the same way. They're the same. Music touches the heart. Also, on a side note, Oma looks way more scarier when he uses advance in this movie than he does in the Kengen anime. Like, he actually looks like an actual demon. He's scary. And with all said and done, both opponents, competitors, collapse on the floor, giving it everything they've got. A really graceful way to end this movie. Or so I thought. Until Yujiro Kuroki came. 10 minutes like, the, like this movie would end in like 10 minutes. And Yujiro is here. So is Kuroki. 
they show up, have their superior moment in this movie, flex on the other characters, and you know, begin to make their exits. Like, it sounds like a simple format, but it's done so well here for both of them. Because at this time in Kangen, Kuroki would be the peak of his verse, and obviously Yujiro is the peak of his verse all the time. Until proven otherwise. And with that marks the marvelous ending to the Underground Arena and Kangen Association matches. Wow. Do you really want to know what makes me say wow and actually like mean it to the point where my heart is throbbing like I'm using advance? It's when the prisoners were revealed right after. What do you mean? And they're all after like Revenge Tokyo happens. I mean, during Revenge Tokyo, they all had their injuries. Yanagi, Doyle, Dorian, Speck, Skorsky. They're all there and Akoya, the justice man, the, the police officer delivering justice. He's there to hunt them down, but he won't be successful, but he's there. Oh, it's just a great and amazing cameo for the prisoners. I was thinking, I oh, imagine they would come in this movie and they actually do. It doesn't make sense, but they do. And I'm all for it. One of my favorite parts. I was just so, so happy to see. I was sweating. I couldn't st remain still. Like to end off the movie, Baki and Oma give their final thoughts of each other. And also the movie itself hinting towards another crossover movie potentially this time at the kangen association where they have their own fights and we could be seeing baki characters in kangen animation which is a 3d and i would love to see that i support it fully that would be peak remember uh, chiharu and adam dudley having that endurance match well you know after the tournament happens they're still having it and nobody's the winner they just both respect each other giving themselves a manly handshake and i think they actually like they pee on themselves like i hear them sigh a little bit i don't know what happens there <laughs> but that marks the end funny enough in conclusion this whole movie was peak i enjoyed it with all my heart it was beyond my expectations extremely beyond my expectations and i hope to see another movie of this crossover or even like just a Baki standalone movie or a Kangen standalone movie that would be so so swell it would be excellent but viewer what do you think about this movie the strong is the beautiful